What is up, everybody? Today, I'm speaking with an undefeated welterweight contender from Memphis, and you can catch his next fight at CFFC 131 versus CJ Lafragola. That happens on April 12th. Kevin Pease joins the program once again. Sweet Pease, welcome back to the program, sir. It's always a pleasure to uh, chop it up with you. I'm always grateful for uh, you for having me on here and let me talk a little shit and just hang out, you know? Yes, sir. Well, Kevin, let's talk some shit. CFFC 127, Carlton Terrence. And I watched this fight right before I hopped on here with you. And this was a complete mauling. No disrespect to your opponent. I give him all the respect in the world for taking that fight against you. But there really isn't a lot to say. You pressure, high crotch takedown, pass in a half guard, ground and pound, arm triangle. That's the fight. Were you like expecting anything different? Like, were you like surprised at anything that happened in the cage? Every time I get in there, I never know what to expect because just it's a fight. You never sleep on any guy with two hands and two feet. When things start unfolding, the movement starts happening and you see the openings. It just one thing after another. And I drill all that stuff so much and drill my way to the finish uh, that I just saw it and working the body, creating that pressure with the ground and pound, really working on doing damage on the ground and creating that panic in my opponent and you know, you saw it. <laughs> we absolutely saw it. It was uh, very, very impressive. And it's been five months since that fight. And, you know, we see you in AC. We see you uh, kind of front and center out there. And we're kind of wondering, like, okay, are they about to put this guy up to fight in the welterweight title? You know, there's that buildup between Turner and Nolan. And then a lot of people were thinking, like, okay, Kevin will get the winner of, those, of one of those two. And it'll either be for a title or for an interim title. Before I ask you about the title stuff. The fight between Turner and Nolan. You were there in attendance. It was a really interesting fight. How did you see that fight uh, playing out, and were you surprised at the outcome? I thought it was a great fight. I thought Nolan did enough. I thought Nolan did more of the hurting. I thought Turner, uh, he did what he does. You know, he got the takedowns when he needed to. He did all right. From what I remember, he did all right on the feet, but I thought Nolan was controlling the fight, and even though he got took down a couple times or held on the cage, no one was working him and doing the damage and uh, taking the momentum. I think he got a reversal in the last round. Turner took him down. So I thought no one should have got the nod for that, but I really wanted to fight Turner. I thought I beat both those guys and uh, I would be excited to compete against either one of them. Um, Cause I think they're studs, but CFSC clearly had other plans, you know? What was your experience like being there in AC, like there as a, as a spectator and not participating? Was it kind of weird in a way? Because, like, you know, you're you're a fighter, and, like, usually when you go to fights, you're there uh, in a corner or there to support one of your teammates, and you were there as a spectator. Was it kind of weird? Man, the CFSC treated me so good. They gave me a freaking beautiful room in the Hard Rock. I chilled. I hung out. I got to talk to the people. The atmosphere was so intense when the fights got going, like, when Nolan walked out, it was like a UFC walkout, the amount of energy that came out. And I thought that was great. And the fans were so into it. You know, I got to have lots of talks with people in the crowd and just bumping into different people. And it was awesome. Great atmosphere. Like what a great place to have some fights at, you know, Evan, I had your opponent CJ Lafragola on the program and I was talking to him about you a little bit. And he was talking about this matchup. And he said to me, Kevin Pease, this name came from left field. I was not expecting to fight this guy, but I'm excited about it, but really wasn't expecting this whatsoever. Do you, is it the kind of the same boat that you're in as well? Like CJ Lafragola, was this a name that kind of came out of uh, random for you too? I don't think it came out of too random once you could tell they weren't trying to do the title fight for me just because we're both into the, the division. And I think they like both of us. And I think they really just want to see you know, who's who, who, they're, who are they going to push to the title? Who's who they are, who they say they are, if that makes sense. You know, when you look at CJ, uh, does he remind you at all of Makoa Cooper? Like I look at these two guys and I'm like, okay, like both these guys are pretty decent wrestlers, pretty decent grapplers. What's your opinion on these guys? And do you think like you've already fought CJ by virtue of the Cooper fight? No. Um, Makoa, his fan, you know, he's like a second, third generation fighter. Um, his brother is a world champion. He comes from that tough Hawaiian background. You know, he's not guys out with one punch. He can deal damage on the feet. You know, he's 
he's a he's a different kind of fighter in my opinion than McCall, a more dangerous uh, fighter than CJ. But in that same breath, I think CJ is a good athlete. I think his skill set of you know getting the takedown and doing the positional awareness and uh, looking for the submissions is a different test than Makoa, who's looking to really, really hurt you and like separate you from your conscious. Um, not to say CJ isn't a problem, but it's just a different type of problem. And, you know, I was, I definitely had um, more butterflies in my stomach thinking about Makoa. Cause I knew I'm like, Hey, this kid wants to hit me, kill me. And, you know, CJ, like he's going to take me down, look to choke me. He might punch, but I know what he's coming to do. He's coming to try to get his hands on me. When I was asking him a little bit about like this matchup and, and what fans can expect. And he was just like a hundred percent we're wrestling and we're grappling. That's a hundred percent what's going to happen. In my opinion, he's like anything else I'll be shocked. And I was just kind of curious without giving away too much of the game plan. Is that something that you more or less agree with? Do you anticipate wrestling and grappling with CJ at CFFC 131? I'm an MMA fighter, so I anticipate everything. We're not going to just be wrestling and grappling because where does the fight start? On the feet. You know, I plan on punching and kicking and using all my weapons um, to try to finish him and get him out of there. You know, if he's so dominant of a wrestler and he can take me down and control me the whole fight, well, then I guess that's how it went in his head. But I'm a fighter. I'm coming to submit, do damage, and – uh get my hand raised in spectacular fashion. So I think it'll be more than a, a wrestling match or a grappling match, just because you've seen in my past fights, I've been able to take guys down and control them. That doesn't mean that that's all the tools I have and uh, different opponents bring different things out of you. And I'm excited to see what CJ brings out of me. And I think that's why CFFC put this match up together. They want to see who rises to the occasion, who shines in Atlantic city under the bright lights and the pressure. And, uh, I a hundred percent believe that's going to be me. Where do you feel like you have the biggest advantages over La Forgola? And I was also curious, do you in, like, is the will for you to want to test him in the striking department? I believe I have the advantages everywhere. I believe that's what makes me special. I'm competent everywhere. I train everywhere. I focus on everything and I get people around me who are knowledgeable about all the different aspects of where an MMA fight takes place. It's not just a one dimensional game to me. Do you have some tricks maybe up your sleeve with the striking that we could expect to see on fight night? Brother, of course I got all the tricks. He's definitely going to have to show up in every realm of uh, a cage fight. And uh, I'm excited to show up. As far as getting ready for the bout, you uh, are from Memphis, but I also know that you go to Killcliffe every so often and do part of your camps there. What's uh, training for CJ Lafergola, CFFC 131? What's your uh, training camp been like? Um, it's been extremely different. It started out in Memphis. Um, I started with my home team, Memphis Judo and Jiu-Jitsu, and all those guys down there getting ready. Um uh, Flew in one of my coaches, Greg Choplin, in to help me for a week and just really work on some things and just be real specific. And um, then I flew out to Killcliffe, and I've been down here for about four or five weeks, I think. A lot of work with Vincente Luque, who's fighting this weekend in Atlantic City. A lot of work with all the phenomenal welterweights we got at our gym. And it's seek and destroy, dominate, finish show cffc i'm the champion they put the graphic in the in atlantic city i'm the champion for a reason because that's who i am show the ufc i'm ready to be in the league right now you know and to do work once i get in the league not pussyfoot around not skirt by so i'm just here to show everybody that i am who i say i am and i'm ready for whatever that comes my way do you envision like you know you get a win here against La Fergola, talented guy, talented fighter, in my opinion? You get a win here. Does that like put you in line? Maybe not even for a CFFC title, but maybe we're talking about a, a, contender, a contender series spot instead. Absolutely. You know, um, I don't I didn't have to take this fight with CJ. 
I could have took an easier opponent and got my five and I could have sat on my record I got right now and waited for that. But I want to be CFFC champion. That's what I want to be. That's my first goal. I have different chapters in my journey of things I want to accomplish. And right now I'm on the chapter of I'm signed to this promotion and this is my last fight on the deal, but I don't want to leave the promotion without that CFFC welterweight world title. Maybe another one too. I like the fight with CJ because one of my goals is to be a D1 wrestler and what better opportunity than in his backyard on one of the biggest cards they put together and just to get that experience of facing that skill set um, in that environment, it's just very exciting. CFFC welterweight title. We look at it and we think about it. Who deserves to stand across the cage from you in that in a hypothetical title fight? Like, who's the right guy for this fight, in your opinion? <sighs> Me. I'm the right guy. I mean, it doesn't really matter who else gets in there. They're going to pick who they pick for their reasons. I just care that I get the opportunity and that. You know, I believe I'm the champion now, but I want my coronation. I want the physical belt. You know, I want that moment. I want the five round battle to get it or however long they can hang in there with me. Um, that's what I've been dreaming about, thinking about. And uh, I want to bring that belt back to Memphis once again, because it's already happened before. Kevin, when I think of you, I think about somebody with a lot of physicality. I think of somebody who's powerful, who's smart, who's strong, who's a great wrestler, who's a great grappler, a complete mixed martial artist. Those are all the things I think about when I think of somebody like you. For people who've never seen you fight before, though, that's my, those are my words, though. For people who've never seen you fight, CFFC 131, what can they expect to see when they tune in on April 12th? I'm coming to smash. You know, I'm coming to do damage. I'm coming to exhaust my opponent and I'm coming to get the finish and put on a show and entertain. And I'm, I got mouths to feed too back in Memphis. So I'm coming to get paid too. So I want the money. I want the belts. I want the blood. I want the action. And I want uh, the opponents like CJ, you know, I want the guys who they go, Oh, you know, what can you do with him? Or what can you do with this? You know, I want to face those guys and sh show them that I'm one of the most complete fighters out there and that no matter what point in the fight, no matter what round or what scenario, I'm dangerous and I can make things happen and I got answers. Kevin, I think you're a very special fighter. I look forward to watching you compete on April 12th. One final question. I'll kind of put you on the spot a little bit. Alex Pereira, he'll be going up against Jamal Hill. Who do you got in that fight? Jamal Hill all day. <laughs> you think Jamal a knockout? You think, we'll, my brother. you think we'll see a knockout? No doubt. I don't know if it's going to be a knock. Well, I, okay, probably a knockout. <laughs> But Jamal Hill all day, you know, Potan's a stud, but that Michigan tough, you know, I think Jamal Hill's just different and he's got a chip on his shoulder and he's going to show, you know, why he was the champ. Hey, absolutely fair enough. I like that pick. So Kevin, I appreciate you pulling up this afternoon. If there's anyone that we wanted to thank, any uh, training partners, any sponsors, let's do it. Um, I just want to thank both my teams at, Killcliff FC and Memphis Judo and Jiu-Jitsu for the support and uh, keeping me sharp and building me and investing into me. All my training partners who've helped me and took care of me this camp. I want to thank my family for, you know, being patient with me while I go away to work and try to chase these dreams. And uh, my sponsors with Let It Fly, um, Desi Saturdays, and they're going to be at the fight too. Shout out to those guys. And, uh, what is it? Canna Dips. Thank you to those brothers over there. Um, the guys at Scrap Life, they're making my kit for this fight. I'm not doing a takedown one. So just thank you to all those people helping me, supporting me, and uh, getting me where I need to go. Well, Kevin, I really appreciate you pulling up and spending some of your time with me prior to the fights. Make sure you all tune in April 12th. This fight will be happening on UFC Fight Pass. Very special fighter. Follow him on Instagram. All of his information will be in the description for this video. Kevin, thanks for pulling up. I look forward to having you back really soon, sir. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it.